clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. I hate clickbait. These people did not make every farm because there are a few more than 11, 13 or even 23 farms you can build. The goal for this video is to actually build every farm in the game, but it became so big of a project I had to split it into two parts. The next one releasing January 1st, 2024. With that out of the way, I'd like to welcome you to the second stage of building the biggest mega base, making every farm and collecting over 25 million building blocks. Over the years, hundreds of people designed thousands of farms, and before I can even start building any of them, we need a clear definition of what counts as a farm. A farm is an arrangement of blocks that creates a new item, either with repeated player interactions or completely automatic. Since there are often multiple ways to farm the same item, I removed all farms that meet this guideline. Now, there is no official list of every farm, but Raceworks made a list of farming every single item, which is close enough. I simply took a copy of it and painstakingly removed duplicates throughout all 1301 lines and finally had my own list with roughly 120 farms. You actually saw this list in my second video and I uploaded it to my Discord. A few months later, an IT data analyst going by Ken randomly dropped by and sent a greatly improved version of it based on my original list. After understanding how it works and updating it with my preferences, I kept asking around if anyone could find mistakes and then it was finally done. A completed list of every farm. All farms are categorized into items, blocks, mobs, trees, plants, quarries and others, but I will go through all of these in detail later. You just select the status of the farm from this drop down menu and it automatically updates every status column and the entire completed percentage. Yes, you can download this excel sheet for free in my discord and huge thanks to Ken for making this. Let's start with a clean document of 136 farms so I can track the progress throughout the video. Okay, every green cell is a completely done and working farm, while yellow means it exists but needs to be redone or fixed. Just as a disclaimer, I built the farms with absolutely no order, meaning the timeline basically doesn't exist. For the video's sake, I'm going through the list in a sensible order by category and similarity of the farms. Okay, now let's get building before I keep wasting more time. The first farm is the iron farm. I built in video 5, producing 44,000 iron per hour in 1.18 but greatly decreasing in future versions, which led me to run it before updating, generating over 4 million ingots. As you saw, I put the farm creator on screen, which I will do for every single farm since I got a single complaint about the credits only being in my Discord server. For the schematics, you will still have to go there, but they are all free and not locked behind stupid paywalls. You're welcome. Show the designers some support, they definitely all deserve it. Next up is the copper farm, located in the end dimension. It works by using reinforcement zombie spawning and drowning them to be converted before getting killed by the player. Pretty simple platform and some water in a tunnel. This will be a common theme throughout this video, but I have literally zero use for this farm since I already got all the copper I need from my quarry. Its only purpose is existing, to have every farm, not to run it. I do need to smell 1.7 million raw copper though, and a furnace array of this size is not going to cut it. Thankfully, large-scale furnace arrays have a common ground at 1728 furnaces, which is exactly one chunker box. I'm not the average player and my goals are anything but ordinary, so let's build it twice, which makes it look at least thrice as cool. Oh yeah, one more thing. I will not show me getting materials for every farm. This is because I usually have 90% of them already and just need to pick them out of my storage. The other 10% need to be crafted or collected, but that's so incredibly boring I didn't even bother recording those parts, but if you desperately need evidence, you can find it somewhere in the 9000 images I sent in Discord. I can't wait any longer and as Max would say, epic timelapse time. There is a coal and item input, which burns the shaker boxes and evenly distributes the items into minecarts, which split them further into the furnaces. The output gets boxed up and arrives neatly organized in the center part. The two systems don't share an input, because I can't really be asked and it allows me to use one side at a time. 
With some math, one item takes 10 seconds to smelt, and for 3456 furnaces, that's 1,244,160 items per hour, which should be the fastest in hardcore. Speaking of records, there are a few random tick based farms that haven't been made excessively large in hardcore. Those include ripstone, weeping vines, and glowberries. This will be quite a large farm, but with the new furnace array and the 200,000 coal I got from my quarry, I was able to smelt enough terracotta and glass for it. I'm just going to build it and explain it afterwards. The random tick range is a cylinder around the player in a 128 radius, meaning you only have to stand at the farm. Flying machines get launched every few minutes with a timer and there's a simple water collection. The annoying part was placing thousands of ripstones, vines and berries above me, but that should be three new records. Oh yeah, this reminds me, I'll also put the farm speed up once it's built and actually show a clip of it running, because a farm that doesn't run isn't producing anything, meaning it wouldn't even be a farm. Before moving to the insanely large amethyst farm I've planned, I'm going to dial things back a bit with water, lava and powdered snow farms. These are pretty basic since it's just a long rotating chain of cauldrons, one in a cold biome and one below dripstone with lava on top. The player just clicks while they pass by dropping the buckets due to a full inventory. Water buckets can actually be filled with dispensers, allowing for water farm without player interaction. I quickly threw something together, added an item elevator and a chest, making it flush with the floor. Ah, I love this thing, it's such a flex having a water farm. Anyways, back to the amethyst farm. This is one of the biggest farms in this video, mostly because it needs so much preparation. I really wanted to make this farm as large as possible, since tinted glass is one of my favorite blocks in the game and looks absolutely stunning if used right. Amethyst clusters grow extremely slow and only in random tick range, so finding the most geodes in that radius is critical. Luckily, some smart people made a geode finding program that searches a seed for the biggest cluster in a specified area. I'll have the program linked below, but for me it turned out to be 17 geodes within the player's range located around 1500 blocks away from my perimeter. Now, the big problem is every geode is unique in size and shape, so you can't build the same farm 17 times. Again, the tech people came in clutch and developed the Geodesy program, which greatly decreases the time to design each farm. If you're interested, Il Mango made a fabulous video on this and I followed his method. I'm currently just finishing up creating each farm and even though they look complicated, it's really just flying machines on a timer, scraping past the budding amethyst and dropping the shards into a water stream. So much about designing the farms, but my hardcore world isn't exactly empty, so the first step is mining out over 100,000 blocks and goddammit, I really hope that would be less. But you don't have to wait, I can just start a time lapse. Getting the materials for the farms wasn't bad either, just a ton of moss and slime for hundreds of flying machines. Honestly, this single farm was already draining my motivation for multiple days, so I just put on some chill music and got it done. Many hours and thousands of blocks later it was completed and I have to say I'm pretty proud of it. One of the fastest amethyst farms out there and I never have to do this again, which is definitely a positive. Next up would be a Corifan farm, but I've already made one in the second video, so we are immediately moving to the Bone Meal farm. I was always a huge fan of the Mango's moss based design, but it was so laggy making 4 of them for a total of 100,000 Bone Meal per hour wasn't really feasible. I wasn't the only one who thought that, and Chaser made a dustless version of it while also minimizing light updates with tinted glass. 
Thanks to the amethyst farm, I have enough tinted glass and the full farm runs at a nice 35 MSPT, 15 below the limit. Bone meal is incredibly important and I'm definitely going to need multiple millions of it for all kinds of farms. I also realized I already shout this, but whatever. Snow farm. This is a pretty sick concept of throwing snow golems over the floor and blowing up the snow during the split second where they are just barely far enough away. Putting minecarts into every ice block wasn't too bad and I added a storage behind the output. This gives me the ability to immediately craft the snowballs into blocks and store them right away, saving lots of space. After getting all the snow, I removed the farm in favor of future plants for my spawn, but to compensate, I present Gilbert, the all-in-one snowball and snow layer farm. Speaking of snow, I need a goat horn farm, and even though the mechanic is pretty simple, you can still make a farm out of it. Here it is. Okay, boring. Next. Music discs. A few months ago, I had a gigantic building urge, and while making some random castle, I also designed a pretty neat disc farm. I added trapdoors to the Mango's general mob farm, put some golems and skeletons at the bottom, and that was it. Making this design was pretty fun though, and I can't wait to finally start designing my mega base in stage 3, which is closer than you think. This farm also doubles as a creeper farm, so I can check both of these off the list. I can batch the next three farms into one area, being scoot, turtle eggs and seagrass. When using bone meal underwater, seagrass gets generated and you just need to mine it with shears. Putting the player in a minecart and adding a collection is all that was left. Now I can use the seagrass to feed the turtles in this pen, which both make turtle eggs you can mine and baby turtles. They wander towards the water but fall through trapdoors and after growing up they suffocate inside the blocks which makes them drop scoots. This puts me at 20 completed farms, ignoring the 1.20 farms for now since I didn't update yet. But don't worry, I'm not forgetting them, they just won't be in this video. Ignoring the sniffer egg farm, I need to build some block converters. By my definition, these do count as farms, since they generate another block and can actually be pretty useful. I already made a concrete converter as part of my gravity block duper previously, so let me introduce you to the others. Pumpkin converters rely on the player to place and shear the pumpkin, which can be broken by a piston. Wood converters are used to strip logs automatically and all they do is dispense a new log. Sponge converters can be made in multiple ways, but just for fun I built a concrete converter in the nether with a simple collection. When placing wet sponge it immediately dries out and gets blown up by some TNT. The copper converter was the most time intensive converter by far. It's basically a really long conveyor which moves normal copper blocks past oxidized ones. Building it is one thing, but waiting for the copper to oxidize in the first place took ages. Only after waiting for multiple days I could actually use the farm, but that's for another video. Phew, okay. That's the first category done and I think at this point you understand why I had to split this video into two parts and didn't release one last month. No time to waste though, so let's continue with the blocks category. I've built cobblestone and stone farms in previous videos already, but I think it's a good time to mention why a cobblestone farm and a furnace array is different from just a stone farm. Really, there's no argument for or against it, it's just personal preference. This also goes for making a torch farm by somehow regenerating the end exit portal over and over again. Sure, it's possible, and sure, it makes a new item, but I just don't want to. I could make a stone farm to get stone, and I can make a tree and wither skeleton farm to craft torches. In the end, the only thing I care about is having any farm or method to get any farmable item. Oh, and XP farms don't give you items, hence I don't count them. Basalt is the cobblestone of the nether. You make it, you push it, you blow it up. Done. Again, I've showed this farm in a previous video just like my ice and obsidian farm. I had to remove it though when yeeting my end island, but you can also get obsidian from bartering with piglins. Bartering gives you many different items, but this is a list of every farm, not every farmable item. For a moss farm I modified one segment of a mango spawn meal farm by removing all composters and adding a water stream and storage. After making a makeshift input and testing it, this actually makes 80,000 moss blocks per hour, which was quite positively surprising. The mechanic of turning stone into moss can be explored even further with dirt farms. When growing a 2x2 spruce tree, it converts the surrounding ground into potzol. Moss blocks count toward that ground, giving us the ability to infinitely farm dirt. Chuan's fame. Develop an insanely fast dirt farm based on that concept, making almost 100,000 dirt every hour. And for the mega base, I'm going to need around 3 million, so I better get cracking. We are absolutely cruising through this and this next farm can make clay, mud and rooted dirt all in one farm. 
because growing azalea trees of moss blocks converts them into rooted dirt, which can be converted into mud with water bottles and dried out to clay with dripstone below. Putting all of this together, you get a really long block conveyor with one input, one output, but three different paths. I had to collect over 50,000 azaleas to get enough materials for this farm though, which I achieved by turning one of the big bone me farms into... Uh, I, I honestly just broke it, but now I can collect azaleas. Oh my god, last one, Pozzo farm. I have absolutely no use for this, but it's just a dirt farm with a block storage instead of a blast chamber, since blowing up Pozzo drops dirt, meaning you have to mine it with a shovel. Alright, let's build this thing. Now we get to some of the weirder farms, brown and red mushroom blocks. These are basically the second tier of tree farm since the player needs to mine the blocks generated from the sapling, or in this case a mushroom. They can't just get blown up by TNT. You can either bring the player to the blocks or the blocks to the player. This gets exponentially worse with leaf farms, which I'll tackle in the second part, but the problem is you can't even push the leaves without them breaking. So the only option is moving the player to the leaves. Luckily, mushroom blocks don't break when getting pushed, so with some weird trapdoor placement and the offhand, the red type and stem blocks are done. The brown ones are a bit more complex, making use of flying machines and incredibly awkward odd clicker timings, but in the end I got there. Finally, something simple. Wool farms. I've already made one of these in my starter base, with one sheep of each color, but nowadays I have a bigger need of wool so I'm going to make this farm a magnitude bigger. One of these for every color of wool for a total of 224 sheep. Alrighty, it's already built and I set all the shulker box loaders and filters because I don't really want poppies and dandelions. The concept here makes use of sheep being able to eat pure grass instead of grass blocks. A dispenser throws some bone meal on it and even if it doesn't get eaten, there's a piston feed tape at the bottom cycling the blocks around. After bringing some sheep over and making the biggest incest sheep family there is, I split them into groups and started coloring them, with a total of 16 of every color. Move them into each farm and we can move to the next one. I've been dying to work with frogs in 1.19 and sometime during this I updated but already built most of the farm in 1.18. I put on a movie and started breeding all of the 140 frogs I needed for maximum efficiency. I may have lost track of time though and ended up with around 250 frogs instead, but it's not the end of the world. I briefly made a path from the portal into the farm and was even smart enough to breed the temperate type inside the farm itself so I didn't have to move them. I already constructed the nether side of the farm ages ago, which is just portal spam and a basalt delta for magma cubes, which get split into the smallest type through powdered snow and eaten by the frogs making a whopping 140,000 frog lights an hour. Wowee! Last farm from the blocks category. Skulk. Grab a shrieker, put it below an enderman farm, attach a stone generator and you're basically done. That's two categories completed with 42 farms built, which is already double my other video. Moving on to hostile mob farms, these are a lot more common but can be taken to crazy levels. I get asked all the time when I will finally build an EOL farm and the answer is still... never. The reason is I have absolutely no use for it and I'm not the person to give into the YouTube algorithm copying what many people have already done. EOL farms are basically fast general mob farms. I painfully made a raid farm ages ago, producing mostly pillagers but also witches dropping gunpowder. Meaning I don't have to rely on my comparably slow disk farm for that. Again, I already made a spider farm in the second video, only leaving zombies and skeletons. I have no use for large drop amounts since I already made a crazy fast bony farm and well, let's face it, rotten flesh is useless. This is the farm and its decoration I came up with. Wasting time is sad, so time lapse. Including the decoration, my 300,000 block guardian farm is still one of the best builds in this world, mostly because it's finished. If you haven't seen the video yet, I really advise you to watch the series from the beginning since all videos build up to the goal of building the ultimate mega base. This gold farm shouldn't be anything new at this point, you've seen it built many times and I'm not making any changes to it. 
But finally, after months of preparation and still using the wither skeleton farm I made in the first weeks, I'm going to build a new one. In the nether perimeter video I mentioned the 1x3 crossroad fortress at the edge of my nether perimeter, so I expanded the area to fit the entire despawn sphere, meaning absolutely no mobs can spawn. By using wither roses on grass you can limit the hostile spawning attempts to wither skeletons, since they are the only mob that can spawn inside them. For the overworld side I had to come up with something more unique. Why you ask? Well look how far away these portals are. I almost gave up on this, but then I remembered mob conveyor belts. Using update skipping in 1.19 I sliced the bottom of each portal so the mobs would fall directly onto the conveyor. The center portal could drop straight into the killing area where I chill and get a fantastic 1500 skulls per hour. Those will come in incredibly handy for the mega base, I absolutely love this farm. Staying in the nether I have more than one fortress in my perimeter. As final redemption for the cheated perimeter and fortress farm I made in my first hardcore season, I shed on myself for once and made the exact same design but legit and perfect with no freaky business going on. I only forgot my floor is made out of full blackstone blocks, so the farm is basically useless. It's been over two years since I last cheated, so I'm not giving up this easily. I already ran the buttering farm for quite some time, producing thousands of nether bricks, which I then crafted into slabs, and you know what's coming. Time lapse! Wait, why is it still so slow? Oh, they can spawn below the blackstone on the nether rack the world eater didn't remove. But I'm not giving up. Using world edit I placed slabs above all the exposed nether rack in creative. And then, using light magic I marked the blocks in hardcore. Let's finally finish this. If that isn't redemption, I don't know what is, but the farm works fabulously. Onto some easy things again, I believe I built a hoglin farm already, same with ghasts. Yep, sure did. Same with a magma cube farm, since I already collect the drops from the froglite farm. My genius felt like the farm was too slow though, so I wanted to make a farm for magma cubes only. I made the exact same nether side, and it obviously wasn't faster. Over 50 farms in and still going strong, but we got a long way to go. I'm pretty well surfed on copper, but tridents are still pretty cool to have, so I need to make sure this drowned farm isn't complete garbage. At this point of the recording process I was almost done though and my motivation wasn't exactly great, so instead of making a huge custom shaped water monster, I went for a simple cuboid. It did everything I wanted it to, same with the stray farm, only difference being it was so far away. Small cube to spawn skeletons, long line of powdered snow and a killing chamber. The only reason this exists is for slowness errors but I don't even want those. Shulker farm. Been there, done that just 18 times, technically even 20. Don't think I need to explain anything here, same with the enderman farm that everyone built at least once. My slime farm was already built months ago and I don't really need anything faster. It makes use of the brown mushroom's low light level to only spawn slimes and kill them with magma blocks. I really didn't want to lose this world to stupid warden farms, I was very careful when making it. It's not complicated at all, but at the same time you don't want to get it wrong. 20 minutes later and I think I will never be able to forget these sounds. Many people were questioning how I'm going to make a phantom farm when it's literally one of the easiest farms on the entire list. Just some water really. The phantoms get caught and pushed into the center where the player kills them. The last farm for the hostile mobs category is former pets. You need a general mob farm and a creeper farm with an area to combine the two outputs. When there's a thunderstorm occurring the lightning rods absorb the lightning, charging the creepers in the process. Now you can move them over and explode them to get the heads. Holy shit, this video is going to be so long, but that's 3 out of 9 categories done and 45% completed. I can't be asked to make huge grass platforms and complicated pushing machines for passive mob farms, so instead I came up with a manual breeding design. 
the player rides in a minecart and randomly attacks every 10 minutes or so. The other hand is used to breed the animals, making sure they don't go extinct. This isn't anything glorious, but remember I have absolutely no use for these farms. I'm only making them to have them, while they still meet every condition of the farm definition I showed at the start of the video. This works for sheep, pigs, cows, mushrooms and rabbits. As a reminder, I already made a bee and squid farm, so these can go. And that's 50% done with a nice 69 out of 136 farms. I'm finishing this in part 2 and maybe you wanna move your subscription to the people that don't clickbait. The statistics will be at the end of part 2, releasing on the 1st of January 2024, but patrons will get early access in a few days. Please check the description and discord, they are quite packed with information. See you soon and goodbye.